Hi, Sadie. Well, first of all, we're super excited to be here today and get to uh, talk to all of you at Fairview. Uh, go Knights. Um, so what was it like to see the Earth for the first time? And the, the Earth is just absolutely gorgeous. It is um, even more beautiful and even bigger um, than I could have expected. And every day we just uh, find new marvels and new, new fun um, and beautiful things to see on the surface of the, of the Earth. Yeah, great question. Actually, there are some things that are quite obvious to see, and you can even notice a difference from your previous flight to your next flight, like the extension of glaciers or the um, extension of lakes. And then certainly a lot of uh, phenomena like uh, droughts and uh, wildfires that we associate with uh, uh, global warming are definitely visible from up here. Hi, Maya. Um, yes, yeah, so one of the challenges that we, we face is certainly just being away from Earth. Of course, that is um, one of the coolest parts of what we get to do as well. Uh, but it does mean we are, are away from our family and friends and most importantly, our favorite foods as well. So we, we definitely miss that, but we're super excited to be here. Yeah, launch was absolutely amazing, um, especially for me. This is my first time uh, flying into space. Samantha here um, has, has flown more than once, uh, but for, for me especially, it was just kind of this whole culmination of all of our training and um, kind of this, this dream that's, that I've had for a long time. So um, we were really kind of focused on the operational moment and, and making sure that we you know have, have everything in line and, and the vehicle is performing the way that it's supposed to, but there's also just just this overwhelming joy and excitement. Yeah, you know, it feels sometimes like uh, being in high school because it's it's kind of like in, in high school, it, it might not feel that way uh, always when you are in that uh, part of your life, but it's a really exciting time because you get to learn so many things and do so many things, you know, from sports to uh, math and English and science. Uh, and so up here is the same thing. Every single day we get to do so many diverse things and we have to be able to like learn and master them as much as possible. Great question, Gabriel. Um, you know, certainly I think we, we all have had our, our challenges and um, things that we've had to overcome to get to this point. Um, I think for me, um, the things that have enabled me to make it through those, those harder times and overcome those obstacles has been finding mentors and friends um, and support networks that have helped encourage me along the path uh, to pursue the things that I was interested in and find opportunities um, that helped me pursue my dreams. So I would encourage you and anyone else to do this same. Well, my colleague here, Samantha Cristoforetti, is the perfect question, perfect person to answer this question. Uh, she is an ESA astronaut, European Space Agency from Italy. Yes, indeed. I think it adds to the fun and the depth of the experience of being up here when sometimes, uh, you know, we, we get to share um, aspects of our culture. You know, Wadi and uh, my other American crewmates explain to me parts of American culture that I'm still not familiar with. Um, you know, and, and sometimes I share parts of, you know, my own European and specifically Italian culture. And then we also have Russian crewmates who bring in all this whole, um, you know, very rich um, and, and in some ways different uh, culture from from their home country and that just makes the experience so much richer and more interesting <laughs> It's an interesting question. I, I don't think I have really experienced dreams, or at least I haven't woken up and, and um, remembered any dreams that I've had. I've actually slept very well in space. Um, we have nice, super comfortable sleeping bags um, that we sleep in in our crew quarters. And inside your sleeping bag, I like to just kind of curl up and just float. And it's uh, super, super comfortable and super easy to, to get, some, get some Zs up here.
Yes, yeah, so far, actually, neither one of us has been out on a spacewalk. We have both uh, trained for uh, spacewalks and uh, for this specific flight, um, Wadi is, uh, you know, if, if the necessity arises, would be ready to go out uh, anytime in uh, the NASA suit, the EMU. And uh, for this flight, me specifically, I am trained on the Russian um, spacewalking suit. So maybe, who knows, in a few months from now, we will be able to answer your question. <laughs>
Yeah, I, I think that it's no different than uh, any other uh, um, interest if you're interested in something uh, and uh, that something is a good thing and astronautics certainly is, uh, then you should go for it and pursue it. And uh, I don't think that there are um, any um, um, particular barriers necessarily to overcome as long as you, uh, you know, work hard and and pursue this with uh, with with passion and and you know it, it's really what uh, what inspires you every day to give the best that you can. Well, I think there's a lot that uh, people can gain from the the this whole thing of human spaceflight that we get to, we have the honor of participating in. I think one of the um, really important pieces um, is this international kind of cooperation that we've we've mentioned um, so far. This this idea of that we can accomplish so much more when we come together and that we can all use our strengths um, to benefit the world and to benefit the earth. Um, I think that that sentiment and that notion is something that we can apply to lots of different um, arenas on earth and I think is a really, really important one. Yeah, that's um, that's an interesting point you bring up. There is indeed such a such a risk. Uh, however, it's a risk that is uh, very much under control, because you know there there are um, assets. There's a network of um, uh, observation uh, instruments that are able to monitor the orbit in which space station flies and if there is ever a, even a remote chance that a piece of debris that is monitored and tracked uh, will hit space station we move space station out of the way <laughs> um, and in the case of smaller debris that are not you know visible from the ground that cannot be tracked um, all of our modules have micrometeorite protection shields that hopefully will catch them before they are able to fly through the space station and create a hole and a leak So my first piece of advice would be to listen to all of your teachers at Fairview. Uh, they're, they're all great and all brilliant. Um, and I would also just say find the, the field or the thing of interest that is, is really the most interesting to you. Uh, make sure that it's something that you just love. It gets you out of bed in the morning. Um, it's not something that you do because you, you think you have to or your parents parents tell you you have to um, really something that you enjoy and if you can find that thing and and do that for a job um, you'll be happy every day of your life and and uh, truly fulfilled so we start about 7 30 in the morning and we have like a meeting except that this meeting happens on space to ground uh, radio so we talk to Mission Control Houston and then to Huntsville, who is responsible for our NASA science. And then we cross over the Atlantic and we go over and talk to Munich in Germany, who is responsible for the European uh, systems and science. And then all the way to Tsukuba in Japan, uh, where they are responsible for the Japanese module, which is, by the way, where we are right uh, at this moment. Uh, and then our Russian uh, cosmonaut colleagues talk to Moscow. And then everybody goes off to their tasks assigned for that day. It can be science, it can be maintenance, us. It can be talking to you guys at Fairview. Um, uh, you know, it can be stowage, cargo. Uh, sometimes, really, not very glamorous things like uh, you know, what he has spent uh, the weekend fixing the toilet. <laughs> but it's fixed. <laughs> it's fixed now. It's fixed. So I would like to thank Fairview not only for giving us a stellar crewmate, but also for giving us a fantastic space plumber. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all so much for your time. It was so great being able to talk to all of you today. Hope you have a, a great week and a great summer coming up. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event.